Welcome to the wood turning workshop. A great thing about being a wood turner is that you can make your own tools or accessorize ones that you already have. Well today we're going to be making this purple heart tool handle, fixing a tool that I broke and we're going to pretty up the old gray beast. Stay tuned. Well, you can tell from my tool collection that I have a weak spot for the store bot, but every now and then I'm looking for just the right tool and can't find it, or I have one that needs a little bit of tweaking. And this scraper is a good example of that. When I bought it, it came with this handle, and that's not a lot of handle for so much steel. So I turned this purple heart tool handle for it, and it balances it out beautifully. It makes it easy to use, and actually I think it's a bit safer tool because of it. Now over here I have some tools my friends made. We have a homemade hook tool, a round skew chisel, a mini parting tool. We even have a bowl gouge with a flame job. I guess that's to help you turn faster. If you happen to have your old slingshot laying around, you can make that into a hollowing tool. And while they're all different, they do have three things in common. They have a handle, they have a ferrule, and they have tool steel. Well, let's get started on our tool for the day. We're going to be making a small scraper. Now, have a piece of high-speed steel. Make sure that you get high speed because if you get regular strength steel, it will dull quickly and you'll spend most of your time at the grinder. I have a 12 inch long blank of purple heart for the handle and I have a 3 quarter inch piece of copper tubing for the ferrule. Now we want to cut this to length so we're going to have to go to the bandsaw for that. Now that we have the ferrule cut to length, we need to do a little bit more work on it. I've got my chuck with a scrap piece of wood mounted in it, and we're going to turn a tenon to fit the ferrule onto that. I'm going to use my bedan tool and just eye this in, part it down. Close. Almost there. I want this to be a tight fit, but I don't. I want to be able to take it off too. I don't want it to be too tight. Okay, there we go. Bring this down a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to grab a mallet. We're going to mount the ferrule on here. Now the reason that we're doing this is see the wood peeling up there? We want to get rid of the sharp edge that's on the inside of the ferrule. So we're going to take a scraper in a second and bevel this out so that won't do that. Now the question is, why is this important? As you pound this onto the handle of your tool, these fibers of wood will get between the copper tubing and the handle and make an ugly fit. Now you might think I'm a little bit crazy wanting to turn metal on a wood lathe. Well, that's why I'm using copper, because copper is a very easy metal to turn. And we're even going to use a scraper that I made myself to relieve the inside edge. Now you do want to take a lighter cut than you would if it was wood. We're just going to rub this scraper back and forth. And I'm just taking off that sharp inside edge. When you're picking the wood out for your handle, Make sure that you pick a hard wood with a straight grain. That way it'll last a long time and not split. Purple Heart's a really good wood for that. We're going to mount this on the lathe, and we're going to rough it out to prepare the blank for drilling. Now Purple Heart comes from South America, and it's a very popular wood. People make quite a few things out of it. Now this is getting more rounded out, and go from end to end. And I want to turn this down to the widest diameter of the handle. Well, 
now it's time to drill the hole for the tool steel. Well, actually there are two camps on when to do this. Some people prefer to drill the hole after they shape the handle. I like to do it beforehand because I think the tool comes out a little bit straighter. Well, what size hole do you drill? I could get all technical on you, but there's an easy way to look at this. Here's my tool steel, and I'm going to turn it facing you. If I drill a hole that is the width of the tool steel, that's exactly what I want to do. So these sides are barely touching as they go in the hole, but these edges cut into the wood as I pound it into the hole. That prevents this from twisting in the handle and gives you a beautiful tight fit. So to drill our hole, I've mounted a Jacobs chuck in the headstock. I've got the proper size bit in here. I have a live center in my tailstock, and I'm going to take the blank, center it up on the tailstock, turn the lathe on, and we're going to use the tailstock to gently feed this into the blank. There we go. Bring it out. Clear it. A little bit more. Now that we've gone about an inch deep, I can back off the tailstock and feed this by hand because I'm guaranteed that the bit will go fairly straight. And this is also a faster way of drilling the hole now. And I want to go the full depth of the bit. Okay. Now, we've got the hole drilled that will hold our tool steel, but we want to make sure one thing. If I slide this back on and unlock the tailstock and bring it up, and you can see the point is off center. No matter how careful you are when you drill that hole, it's probably going to go in a little bit crooked. It might be you, it might be the wood that caused it to happen. But now, by locking my tailstock down and advancing the center again, I'm going to dimple and make a point on the blank, and now I have my new center to the blank. Now, I need to remove the blank, remove the Jacobs chuck, and we're going to put a drive center back in the headstock. And I want to change out my tailstock live center because this one has a small point and I want to go to a cone shape live center because I'm going to take the blank, reverse it, put this on my new center mark that I made. So now when we bring this up, the cone center centers itself in that hole. So we have the drilled hole and the shaft of the tool in line with the lathe. Now that we've moved the center line though of the blank, it is out of round again. So we'll take our roughing gouge and true that up quickly. Okay, that looks pretty good. Our next step, we have to start fitting the ferrule onto the handle. And this is going to be the part of the handle where the ferrule will go. We're going to take our calipers and get the inside diameter. Now, I need to stop the lathe. I'm going to back off the tailstock just slightly. Bring in my ferrule, test fit it. Not quite yet. I need to take it down just a little bit further. But I do want a snug fit, so I want to be very careful about how far I take down the wood right now. Stop it again. Check for fit. Ooh, that is perfect. It's just getting snug. So I'm going to use my calipers, loosen them up, come in and measure that diameter, lock it down, and I'm going to transfer this diameter on down the shaft for about an inch. I want to go back further than the ferrule is long. That looks good. Now we'll come back in with our parting tool. Okay. Now I'm just going to bring these high spots down. And it's very critical that you're accurate with these diameters 
because when we start putting the ferrule on in a minute, we could run into a lot of trouble. Now, my last cut, I want to kind of angle in a little bit towards the headstock, dish out this part of the tool handle, and go in just a little bit deeper, because if we still have wood fibers peeling off when we put the ferrule on, they'll break away right here, and they won't stick between the ferrule and the wood, and we'll still have a beautiful seam. Now, before we go any further, grab your tool handle, put your ferrule on with the beveled end down. Now, a tight fit is a good fit. Okay, I can't go any further because the wood is flush with the top of the copper tubing now. So I'm going to take a second piece of copper tubing and use it to drive the rest of the ferrule down into the shoulder of the tool handle. Now let's put the blank back on the lathe so we can start shaping the handle. And when it comes to shape, use your imagination, whatever feels good to you, whatever works. I'm going to start making some gentle curves and I'm going to use a roughing gouge for that. Now keep in mind, the grain direction of the wood is running with the lathe, so we have to cut from high to low. If we start cutting low to high, it starts tearing out the grain. So we want to leave a nice smooth tool finish on the handle. The roughing gouge is great for long, sweeping curves. It has a nice broad edge to it, makes it easy to do that. So for the detail work, I need to switch to a spindle gouge, and I'm going to start working on the ends and shaping them now. I'm just making a little bead here. And I'm just starting the shape. I don't want to finish it yet. I'll go to this end and we'll start shaping the ferrule side. I just want to gently round this. And bring it down to where it's almost touching the ferrule. Not that I'm worried about touching the ferrule, but having a little shelf there keeps the tool strong. Now here's the cool thing. This is copper and watch. You can turn copper with your spindle gouge, too. And I'm going to clean up this edge so it doesn't have any sharp spots on it. There we go. Now I just want to remove a little bit of extra wood on this end since I've got that other end done. Taking care not to hit the drive center. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to grab our skew chisel and put a little decoration into the handle by making three V-cuts. So you bring the tool in, plunge it in, you make a mark, bring it to the left, tilt the tool slightly, raise the handle up, and it cuts a V. Go to the right, tilt the tool to the right a little bit, lift the handle, and there you have a nice V-cut. Let's make two more. Now, while those marks look nice, they don't really stand out. So I want to highlight them. And I'm going to use another homemade tool, and that's a wire burner. And I turn the handles for that, because one of the important things about a wire burner, you never want to wrap the wire around your fingers. I think you have an idea of what might happen. So we're going to turn this on, speed the lathe up a little bit more, put the wire into one of the grooves, and put pressure on it, and you'll see it start smoking, and now it's left a nice black mark. Let's do the other two. Now you might think you could use any wire you have to do this, but piano wire really seems to work the best and last the longest. Now keep in mind, this is a handle. It's going to be in your hand. So I really don't want to make a very slippery surface, so I'm only going to sand this to 220 grit. Now, while 220 is good enough for the handle, Daddy wants a little bling, 
So we're going to go all the way up to 600 grit on the copper. Now a quick trip to the belt sander to clean the ends up. An interesting aspect about purple hearts, when you apply heat, it darkens the wood. So really rich purple. Just gonna put a small flat spot on the wood. Now all we have to do is dry the tool steel home. And if your steel is too long, you can score it with a file and then safely snap it in a vise. Just make sure you cover it with a cloth so no shards will come off at you. Pound this in. Now I'm just going to put one coat of polyurethane on here to protect the wood. And that flat spot I sanded in earlier is a great little trick because when you set the handle down on a flat surface, it won't roll off. Now let's get to our next project. I'm roughing out a scrap piece of purple heart I had laying around because I want to make a handle to replace the one I broke off of this bowl jig. It'll wind up looking like this and we'll use some epoxy to hold it on there. But the first thing I need to do is round out this little block. Okay, now that that's round, I'm going to take a parting tool and clean up the end. Now what's important about this cut is I want to make this end perfectly flat. Because it's going to match up to a glue block and if we have a perfectly flat surface, it'll adhere really well to the wood and won't break off. I left a little tenon on the end of my blank because that's going to help us make an even stronger attachment to the glue block. And I'm using my calipers to get the diameter of that tenon, and we're going to transfer that to the glue block. Bring the calipers up, and just touch the tip closest to you, make a mark. That's a little bit too wide. There. Now that mark is matching up with the tip furthest away from me, so that's the diameter of the hole I need to cut for the tenon. Now to hollow this out, I'm just going to use a small parting tool. There we go. Let's see how that fits. Oh, very nice and tight. Now I'm going to take some medium thickness siren acrylate super glue and spread it on the bottom of the blank here. I'm also going to get it on the tenon I made. I want to get a good coating all the way across the surface. I want it to cover every bit of the exposed wood here. Okay, now I'm using medium viscosity because it doesn't set up that quick. I have a few seconds to work here. Now I'm going to take an accelerator, spray it liberally on the glue block, put this into place, bring up the tailstock, and bring the point up to put pressure on the wood and hold it tight into the glue block. Now one last step. I want to take the glue and put a thin bead around the edge. There we go. It's flowing better. Okay. I don't want a whole lot on there. I just want a thin bead. I'm going to take the accelerator again and spray that. That gives me even more bond to the glue block. And we'll let that dry for five minutes. Well, that looks good and solid. First thing we want to do is to trim up the end of the blank. Now this end of the blank is going to receive the nut from the bowl gouge jig. So just like we did with the tenon for the glue block, we're going to use our calipers, measure that, and transfer that diameter onto the end of this blank. And then we're going to hollow that out to receive that bolt head. I'm going to go back to my same small parting tool. 
Now the difference here is this hole needs to be about three eighths of an inch deep because that bolt head is a little bit taller than the tenon I had on this blank. So we'll just take it down in stages. Now I'm not going out to my outer line yet. I'm just getting rid of this wood. And I'll test fit the bolt head to see if that's wide enough yet. Oh, that is perfect. Just make it a little bit deeper. Now that is deep enough, but when you're going in that deep with a parting tool, it wants to move the tool towards the center. So to make a really clean, straight line in there, I need to take a skew chisel on its side like a scraper and just push it straight in. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Now if it's a little bit loose, don't worry, because we'll use epoxy to hold that in there. Now the only critical measurement we have to worry about in making this handle is the depth of that hole. So we'll transfer that over and I'll make sure I stay away from that. And we'll take a spindle gouge and start shaping the handle. And it's just a subtle bead. That looks pretty good right there. We'll come back this way. Just turn away that mark. Now I'm going to take my parting tool and part this off. I want to make a clearance cut. That way the tool won't grab. Now, to finish up the top, I need to mount it on the blank again. So I'm going to take the measurement of the inside with my calipers. Use the point to transfer that over to the blank. There we go. And with my parting tool, bring that down. Make a tenon and see how that fits. Ah, it's good and tight. Let's turn the lathe on. Well, it's running really true now. So we'll just take our spindle gouge and make a couple of cuts to clean up the top. Now I need to mix up a little bit of two-part epoxy so I can attach the handle to the bowl gouge jig. So we'll take our handle here, put that in there, got a little bit of squeeze out, which is good. That means we make good contact. And we'll just balance that right there and let that set up. Now to our next project. A lot of lathes on the market come with these little balls that are on all the handles. And that's okay, but every now and then I found myself fumbling around trying to find it. So I went ahead and turned something, uh, kind of looks like a pickle, but it gives me a nice big grip and I can find the handle without even looking for it. So I want to do the same thing for my tailstock. Well, you can see I've already roughed out my blank of Coco Bolo. It's being held by the jaws and the chuck. I did drill a hole that's slightly smaller than the threads on the handle, and that'll fit nicely in a minute. And I have a cone center holding this for just a little extra security. Not that it will fall off, but it'll help reduce vibration. And we're going to use a spindle gouge. And to make a pickle, it's a bead. So sneak up on the pickle. That's all it takes for that end. Now we'll do the bead on the other side. Cocobolo is one of my favorite woods to turn. Has a high oil content. Makes a beautiful cut. 
stands up really nicely. Now I'll speed the lathe up a bit because I'm going to use a wax finish. Coca Bolo has such a high oil content that you have to go to a bit of trouble to be able to apply something like a polyurethane on it. And since this is going to be in the shop, I think the wax will do it just fine. And it'll look very nice. Well, I was going to use a thread tapper to cut threads in here, but the threads on the rod are so sharp they cut for me. Well, that works really good, and it's a nice grip also. Well, I think our three projects turned out pretty good. We made a tool, we fixed a tool, and we prettied up the old gray beast. So look around your shop and use your imagination and see what tools you can make or fix up. Until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning.